Hello guys, welcome to my YouTube channel. This is your girl Nesmo. So in today's video, we are going to talk about driving in Ireland, buying a car, and also insuring your car. So we have the best person for the job. So today we have Brian Gideon with us. If you have actually been on my page multiple times, you know that Brian Gideon's face, a very popular face on my YouTube channel, has actually helped us a lot with a lot of information um, when it comes to my channel. Brian Gideon, please, you're welcome. Um, thank you very much, Nesmo. It's always a delight um, coming on your channel. And I'm always honored to have you. Moving straight into today's video, I think we'll start with um, how non-EU um, immigrants can get their driver's license. Okay, So we'll take it from someone who, are, who is already driving from their home country and then someone who does, has never driven before from their home country. Maybe you can take it like that. And then we'll move to insurance and also um, the later part of it as well. Yeah, so um, thank you very much. Um, so driving is very essential once you come into Ireland. Um, I, I, I believe it's only a necessity that one owns a car here yeah. because uh, depending on where exactly you are working and then um, where you stay, you probably would need a car to take you around. Um, in fact, if you, are, if you are a family like I have, like um, you, are, you have a family of like three, four, five, where you have kids, definitely. Because going out to shop, all of these things, um, I mean, definitely would require that you need, you have a car. Um, it, it makes things easy. Um, it makes it handy. And then um, it, it makes everything convenient for you because um, you, you wouldn't have to go through all the stresses that other people who have to be walking by the roadside go through. Yeah, of yeah. course, um, the transport system here in Ireland is very good, but then um, at certain times, you'll definitely need the car. Yeah, so um, it's, 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 if you've been driving from your home country, yeah. okay, um, you have a license in your home country, um, depending on the country that you come from, you might exchange that license with that of Ireland. Yeah, Ireland has got, um, yeah, they, 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 they've got um, licenses exchange, um, agreements with some countries yeah so for example if you are in africa i i know south africa if you are in south africa you can exchange um your license with the irish one that we have yeah because um just like south africa um ireland drives on the left hand side yeah okay yeah so they, they've got some uh, agreement and then also with other european countries as long as you are from an european country um or the eu um, okay. They have an exchange license um, agreement with you. So you don't need to go through all the various processes of acquiring a new um, um, license once you come into Ireland. So basically, um, that, that is just that. That's just that. Yeah. So everybody definitely at some point will need to be driving. And then it's, it's yeah. very essential that you drive with a license. Okay. okay. Yeah. Um, I will just say that if you have a license from your country, okay, yeah. which ideally um, has those exchange programs with Ireland, then it means that you don't have, you just have to contact the um, department that deals with um, that that deals with um, license here in Ireland. And with yeah. this department, I'm looking at the National Driving Licensing Service here in Ireland. Yeah. For short NDLS, you just contact them and then um, they will look at your um, validity, I mean, from the country that you are in, and then yeah. they will do that exchange for you for an Irish license. Yeah, but well, in the event that you are from a country that does not have that agreement with Ireland, what it means that you can take a, um, an, an international driving permit from yeah. that country. And then once you come into Ireland for a period of six months, you are allowed to use that international driving lines um, and permit. Okay. Wherever you go, you can use that. But within that six months, you must make provision to also sit for your learner's license here in Ireland and then progress you also having your 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 permanent la driving license in Ireland. So basically that is that is how it goes for those who are having licenses. Okay, yeah. so if you are able to bring your international driver's license in Ireland, you don't need to apply to any institution before you are allowed to drive. So far as you have it, you can drive. Yes, um, let me let me make this differentiation. You see, there is a difference between international driving license and okay. then international driving permits. Okay. Okay. Now, 
if you have an international driving license, it doesn't necessarily allow you to drive here in Ireland. International driving license means I'm from Ghana, I'm from the United States of America, I'm from this country, I'm from that country. I have yeah. that country's license. It's international, okay? Yeah. Now, you need to apply for the international driving permit. Yeah. The permit, yeah, the permit is the one that is going to allow you to drive internationally. Yeah, okay. so let, let, yeah, let us know that distinction. Yeah, because most of the time people are with their own license from their own country and they think that just with that they can drive. No, you need the international driving permit. So you just contact your um, DVLA. I think that's what we refer to that in Ghana, driving vehicle yeah. licensing authority in Ghana. Depending on your country, just contact them. Tell them that you want you you are in another country. You need a permit to drive yeah. in that country, and they are yeah. going to issue that permit to you. So that that is it. Okay, so for those that have never driven before in their country, like new drivers, so when you come into Ireland, what is the process for that as well? Yeah, so um, for, for new drivers, um, I, I will, I'll briefly take you through the process of someone who has never driven in his or her life before. Yeah, so um, now um, in, in Ireland, just like I mentioned, we have two bodies that make sure that um, you know how to drive, you have the qualifications to drive on the road. And then even as you are driving on the road, you are obeying all ro road rules and regulations, okay? Yeah. yeah, so we have, first of all, the Road Safety Authority. The Road Safety Authority uh, makes sure that driving testing is done in Ireland, okay? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, they, they go through all the processes with you to make sure that you are really valid and then you have all the essentials to drive in Ireland. Again, once you are passed once you've passed all your driving tests and whatever, the National Driving Licensing Service, NDLS here in Ireland, will now go on to issue your driving license. Okay. Now, okay. Um, first of all, once you come in, okay, you need to apply for what is known as a learner permit. Okay. A learner permit. Yeah. Now you have no idea of driving. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So um, you need to apply for a learner permit. But before you up get that learner permit, there is an exam that you need to do, okay? okay. It's an online um, theory system. I mean, questions that you need to answer. So you have about 40 questions that are basically online. You have to book an appointment and then you go and sit for these questions. So yeah. basically you have to pass, you, you need to pass like, get about 35 of the 40 questions right before you are giving before before you are giving that passing certificate like um something that tells you that okay i've passed i passed the 35 i passed 37 39 yeah. or 40 questions i i answered all of them correctly yeah. now if you are able to answer all of these correctly okay or pass yeah. more than 45 of them then the yeah. next thing is that they are going to, you, you now need to apply for your learner permit. Okay. Yeah. Now, I mean, applying for the learner permit, um, you need to go online, okay, through okay. the NDLS system. And yeah. then um, you apply online. So they are going to yeah. ask for certain things. You need, first of all, you need to, um, an eyesight report. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So um, you need to book an appointment with an optometrist or someone who is qualified to check your eye. Okay, and then you book that appointment, go for that appointment, get the results of that. And then you use that together with the results of your theory test, okay, yeah. to now apply for your learner's license. Okay, okay. now um, you will receive your learner's license within five to ten working days. Yeah, okay. they are, they are, as long as all your documents are right. They'll review your documents and then within five to ten working days, you should receive your learner's permit. Yeah. I mean, the yeah. learner's driving license. Okay. Now, okay. with the learner's driving license, um, it, it means that it has certain restrictions. Okay. Yeah. yeah. It has certain restrictions that come with it. And as we move on, um, I believe that um, I'll, I'll capture all of those restrictions with the learner's license. Okay. So you spoke about the fact that we have to complete a theory test. Uh, well, how do we get materials to pass this test? Okay, so um, basically, um, with a theory test, um, you, you can you can go online to the DDLS site. Okay, yeah. Now yeah. they they've got they've got an app that you can you can purchase online. 
Okay, right. using your Android phone or your um, uh, um, Apple phone, you can okay. um, buy that online. Um, additionally, uh, yeah, you, you buy, I think it's between 12 euro to 20 or 30 euro. Okay, and then you can use that for the rest of your life as long as it's on your on your tablet. So if, if, if I get it, I can, if, if only I don't delete the app. Okay, yeah. anybody who has my phone can still use the same we'll app. But then, unfortunately, yeah. it's it's not transferable. Okay, yeah. yeah. And then, um, additionally, um, if you go to this site, um, I think basically maybe you are going to post that site on, on your yeah, on your, I will on your do that. Yeah, yeah. Um, dot com questions. This this is a free site. Yeah, where you can go through all about eight hundred theory questions. Yeah. Okay, uh, yeah, we'd say theory questions, but in actual fact, it's an objective test. Yeah, okay. um, just to add up, I think for myself, I used the car and bike app, and it was really good because oh, okay. it was 800 questions just like that. It has different categories, and it exactly. was very beneficial as well. When I went, it was the same questions, and it kind of prepares you, so those sites okay. are very good. Yeah. yeah yeah so um depending on what ex i mean you can you can look at all the sites that are available but i will assure you that i mean after going through all the 800 questions and then being competent in them there is no way you are going to feel that your yeah. the, the yeah. theory test yeah because yeah. all the questions are definitely going to come from there and then you should yeah. have understanding of the rules of the road Okay. Yeah. If you haven't driven before, um, you should at least have. You see, that's the more reason why when 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 you are in a car, car is driving, you should be watching some of these things. Thank yeah. Because, you. like I said, coming back from Ghana or coming back from, from other countries in the world, you realize that most countries are driving on the right hand side. Yes. Now, this time you are going to drive on the left hand side. It poses different challenges, okay, to you. So the most important thing is anytime you are in a bus, anytime you are in a car, in a taxi, whatever, make sure that you are also watching how these drivers are going about things, watching the road, okay? You see so many yeah. signs. And then try as much as possible to understand what these things are. Yeah, because in, yeah. in as much as you are not driving at that time, by watching them, you learn a lot, okay, yeah. on, on the road. Yeah. Okay. So, right. so after you have your drive uh, your learner's permit, what is the next step? Yeah, so um, after you have your learner's permit, now you need to practice how to drive with your learner's permit okay so now it means that you can drive your vehicle if you have your own vehicle you can drive it but because you're on a learner's permit you always need to display an l plate l plate okay. okay at the back of your vehicle and then in front of your vehicle now this will this will tell other past um, other road users okay other drivers that you are now learning how to drive so they should they should basically take it easy on you yeah, yeah. so and then um as i mentioned with the with the learners okay there are certain restrictions that come with the learners license okay yeah um now at all times as i mentioned you should display the l plates additionally yeah. you should always be accompanied by a qualified driver yeah. yeah that is that is quite difficult because if if, yeah. if you are from another country you don't know anybody, anybody yeah that is it's difficult yeah. getting somebody to be with you at all times yeah. when you are driving yeah but that okay. is what the law says that at every point in time when you are driving on the road with a learner's permit you should have a qualified driver sitting okay. beside you okay, okay. Yeah. yeah and then also you cannot drive on motorways Okay. Yeah, if, if you if if you'll agree with me, motorways are the shortest. They are the nicest. Yeah. They are the best roads that we have around. Yeah, and yeah. then they are the busiest as well. Yeah. yeah. So for a learner, you can't drive on a motorway. It means that you always have to use the um the 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 what should I say the rural or the local routes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. To to get to your destination because the 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 motorway is considered not safe for you um yeah. additionally there are you cannot tow a trailer okay? okay or you cannot also pick a passenger um and then demand money from that passenger i mean you cannot use that car for yeah. for, for for your private business like a taxi 
Oh. If if yeah if if you, if you have the L so that 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 is what we should know about the learner's permit okay now okay. so for some time it means that you need to engage the services of someone who needs to drive okay to be taking you around to be teaching you some basics on the road okay that's why we are saying at all times definitely get someone to sit beside you who is a qualified driver and then can teach you all of this okay now um after getting the learner's license as i mentioned you can now practice driving and then yeah. you have to book you have to book okay. um, what is known as essential driver training edts yes. okay edts with a recognized um, um driving school okay yeah, with a recognized driving school. So you have to book an EDT. EDTs are essential driving training lessons, okay? okay. Now, there are 12 of these lessons that you need to book online. Okay. The good thing is that if you have your international learner's permit, okay. instead of doing these 12 lessons, oh. you will only do six of them. Yeah. Okay, so this time you book with an, um, a qualified um, driving um, instructor or a driving school, and then they are responsible for taking you through six lessons or 12 lessons, okay? Now, the point, is, the point here is that most of them are not now going to teach you how to drive. Yeah. Yeah, because it is expected that at least you know the basics, you know some, some, yeah. Yeah, some, some few things about driving, okay? So... Ask not to make their work easy. They they want you to be someone who at least knows some basics of it yeah. so that it's easy for them. So you have to do 12 of these lessons. And anytime you go out with your instructor, the instructor has got a logbook given to you and then they are going to fill it out till you finish with all your 12 lessons. Okay? okay. And then now they can sign you out and then upload it to the um driving drive um, the, the 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 testing system i the official yeah. testing system. The, oh, okay then after that you can all up, uh, for, your exam. The, exactly for for your okay. theory um the, the driving test um itself yeah so um it so it's it, it worked like this um if if i'm if i'm a driver in my former country and then i have an international learner's permit now i'm going to do six of these lessons Okay, yeah. each of these lessons, um, after I finish them, usually after it is only after finishing them that I can yeah. apply online. Yes. Okay. Yeah. For my driving test itself. So the driving test is the final stage here. Yeah. So all of this time, all of this while you have not been assessed by an external person. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, all yeah. of this time you have not been assessed by an, an external person. You've been driving driving with the L, but this time after right after passing, um, I mean going through all your EDTs, and then if your instructor feels you are competent enough, they'll give you the go ahead to now book and then um, do your driving test itself. The thing that I want to say is that after after um, your EDTs, you need to do the driving test itself. Yeah, so you need to also book online for a date for the driving test. And then on that day, you have to go to the the, um, the, the RSA, Road Safety okay. Authority. And then that is when the driving itself will be done. They'll ask okay. you some few questions on the road and then about your car. And then now you sit in the car, you drive around for them to observe how you drive, okay? Whether you are obeying all rules of the, um, rules of the road. So that, that, that should be it. Once you pass that, then they can now issue your driving license to you. And then with the driving license, okay, for the first two years, what happens is that you are considered as a new driver or a novice driver. So at every point in time, when you are also driving, you need to display an N, N sticker, yeah. okay, N sticker at the back of your car and then in front of your car. That also tells everybody you are a new driver, okay. But this time, you have no restrictions, okay, like... A learner's, a learner's okay. license with that has, okay, this time you have no restrictions with driving. So that is basically yeah. that. And then you can you can go on to drive. Okay, that is wonderful. Um, I believe that we've covered all that for the driving, um, how to get your driver's license. So now we'll move on to um, how to buy a car. And then finally, we'll talk a bit about taxation and also insurance. 
Now, um, um, buying a car, um, I mean, the choice of a car is really dependent on the one who is going to use it, okay? Yeah, yeah someone will decide to buy a brand new car, someone will decide to buy a used car, yeah. Um, I mean, it's, it's, it's choice-wise, okay? And then depending on your family, the number of people in your family, okay, you might decide to go for a particular type of car, okay? So here in Ireland, um, you can buy from auction, Cars that are on auction, cars that have had, had accidents before, you can go bid for them and then buy. But remember that with these cars, they also come with their own problems, okay? Yeah, yeah you really cannot take the company on because um, as part of the bidding, so some of these cars may have hidden faults in them. As long as yeah. you build and it's sold to you, that, that ends it, okay? You have no rights with that or no warranty on that. Again, you can buy from, from a private person. Okay. okay. Yeah. So people are also selling their cars. They can advertise anywhere. And once you are interested, most of them, you find some of these cars on Facebook marketplace and those areas. So, yeah. yeah. And then you can call that person individually and then you can go and then discuss with him based on his terms. And then your terms, you agree, you purchase the car. Yeah. But it also comes with its own problems, honestly, because if someone is going to sell his car, there are certain faults that they may not disclose to you. Yeah, because yeah. they want to get rid of them. So they, they will just make it NCT. Um, yeah. they, it passes for the NCT and then immediately they know that this car may not last long. So they need to get rid of that. You go, you buy. That's also a, your own problem. Okay. okay. Now, um, so the, the, the next thing is buying from a garage or a car dealer. Yeah. So usually I would advise so many of us to look out for these options because these cars come with warranty. Okay. Or guarantee. Yeah. So buying from a garage, you can just go into any garage. And um, the good thing here in Ireland is that you don't necessarily need to have all the money in order to get a car. Yeah. So as long as yeah as, as long as you are working and then you are assured of monthly um, income okay you can submit your pay slips whatever to them to the dealers and then based on that they can calculate how much you're going to pay every month okay for a, a number of years okay, okay yeah so and you have to be in ireland for like two years or like a year or something is there any restrictions to that no 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 as long as you have your irish residence permit okay mm -hmm. yeah as long as you have your irish residence permit even if you have to use five years to pay the cost of the car i mean they are going to spread it for you okay yeah so they'll, they'll, they'll look at all of these documents and they'll know that no it's not as if you are coming to ireland for just a visit yeah. they, i mean you are, you are coming here to stay you are coming here to work so they look at all of these things and then they look at whether you'll be able to pay these loans back and then yeah. they, they, they give. So that one, I mean, you determine which car you want. So you go, yeah. oh, I like BMW. This is very nice. 2023 model. Oh, wow. I like that. But yeah. the cost is also there. Yeah. Okay. So you factor the cost and then they can do, there they will calculate how much you're going to pay every month. So you know that yeah. for the next five to 10 years or whatever, you are going to service this car, maybe at a rate of like, 200 euro a month or whatever depending on the calculation that is done and i should say this okay. come these, these cars comes with extra warranty okay? okay because buying from the shop um i mean they, they are these people are businessmen so yeah. they don't really want their businesses to have a bad name so they make yeah. sure that selling something to you is something that you would really be happy about okay in yeah. the event that you are not even happy like maybe in six months or whatever the car has any problem definitely they are going to make sure that they they, they do all of that because of the warranty they are going to give to you and that's okay true. Yeah, so I mean, um, once we are buying cars, let, let us look more towards the car dealers and then these garages. I think okay. they are they are they are they are very good. Okay, and then um, so you need to do your research properly before you buy a car. Yeah, um, that that is the short and long of it all. Just do your research before you buy a car, and then um, basically you can buy any type of car. So here we have electric cars. We have hybrid cars that uses both electric and then petrol. And then you've got your normal petrol and then um, diesel cars. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, most of them are automated. Okay. But from the cars that are like below 20, 2015, you get most of them being manual. 
Okay, so depending on whether you want a manual car or um, um, an automatic car, you can go for either either of them. Yeah, and then um, just to add to that, if your license in during your driving license you went for a manual um, um, test, then it yeah. means that you can drive both automated vehicles and then manual vehicles. Okay, but if you went solely automatic during your driving test, you'll be issued an automatic driving license so it means that yeah. you can only drive um automatic cars yeah. not manual cars so let's take note of that as well so that that is that you just go you get your car and then that day i mean you they will yeah. just give your car out and then you can go your way yeah making sure that the nct is valid it has a vrt and then um they will definitely have to change the um ownership to your name yeah. now yeah, so okay. they will send all of those details to you. And then it should also have a moto tax. Okay. Now, depending yeah. on the year the car was brought into Ireland, okay, yeah. um, I know for one that cars that are above 2015, yeah. I mean, um, you definitely pay a lower moto tax because of the amount of carbon that's, uh, that is emitted into the environment. So you, yeah. the moto tax you pay is quite, is quite cheap. As compared okay. to a car that has been in the um, in the system for a long time, like twenty ten below twenty ten, yeah. I mean you could extra for those in terms of motor taxes. Okay, so now let's end with let's end with insurance. All we need to know about insurance and some of the tips when it comes to insuring our cars. Yeah, so um, um, I, every car that is on the road needs to be insured. Um, it's yeah. either the driver is, has insured himself or has insured the passengers or has insured the car itself, okay? Yeah, so basically in Ireland, we have three types of insurance. We have the third-party insurance, we have the third-party fire and theft, and then we have comprehensive insurance, okay? Oh. Now, depending on the insurance company for... I mean, I cannot uh, mention any company here because yeah. I don't have, yeah, I don't, I don't, I, although I'm, I'm, I've been on two insurance so far, I cannot mention any of them here. So, um, depending on what exactly you want, you might want to go for a third party, a third party fire and then theft and then comprehensive insurance. All of these have got their limits. Yeah. Now, um, let me just mention a little about third party insurance. So with third party insurance, you are only insuring the car against an accident. So in case of an accident is the one that's had if i if i'm using a car and then i have an accident okay if i collided with somebody they are rather going to settle that person instead of me yeah, yeah. yeah so whatever happens to you that is none of their business okay yeah. so that is basically the third party insurance now with a third party theft and then fire um if if if, if my car is being stolen okay or if, if if there is a fire outbreak it affects my car if my car gets bent okay my insurance company is going to make sure that they they they, they look into it and then get me a new car okay That's and then right. finally with a comprehensive comprehensive it means you have insured everybody okay um yourself your car and um, the other person who you had an accident with everybody this time is covered so basically most of the insurance companies depending on what you choose it comes yeah. with its own cost. Yeah, so the comprehensive usually has a huge cost because of what goes into it than the other um, insurance um, packages. Yeah, so um, I mean, depending on your salary level, depending on how much you are earning, you can opt for one of these insurance packages. And it's, it's usually it's over a year period. Okay, if over a year or if after a year you haven't had any accident or have haven't had any theft or fire then they have what is known as a claims bonus it is going to reduce the amount of money that you are going to pay the subsequent years okay, okay. yeah so all of that it depends on the insurance company you are you are choosing and there are so many of them that we can google and then check online okay yeah for yeah, for learning thank you so much thanks so much for Okay, guys, so now let's look at some tips uh, for you to know when you want to drive in Ireland. Driving in Ireland quick tips. In Ireland, you drive on the left-hand side of the road. Two, yield to all vehicles coming from your right and always turn left on entering a runabout. Three, you must be at least 17 years old to drive in Ireland. Four, speed limits in Ireland are in kilometers. The speed limit is 50 km per hour in built-up areas, 80 km per hour on regional and local areas. 
100 km per hour on national roads and 120 km per hour on motorways. AC Euro fine and three penalty points if caught over speeding. Also, all vehicle occupants are required to wear seat belts at all times. Also, for those riding on motorcycles, helmets must be worn at all times. Use of mobile or cell phones while driving is strictly prohibited. Lastly, at all times, you are required to carry a valid driving license. Your car must display both proof of insurance and a motor tax dex. And if the car is over four years old, the national car test, which is the NCT dex, must be displayed at all times. Okay, guys, so this is the end of today's video. Thank you all for always coming through to watch my videos. Brad Gideon, I really appreciate it for always honoring my invitation. Anytime I call on to you, you have been a helpful person on this page and have to say that. Okay, guys, so recently I actually did a video about some apps I need to have um, in Ireland. So I have some apps that talks about um, selling cars. So if you wish to check these apps as well, you can actually check that video out and then you can download these apps also on your phone. You can check some of the cars out. Um, can you remember to like this video, also remember to share and also hit the subscription button if you haven't done so. If you have any plans about coming to Ireland, I know that this video is going to be very beneficial to you. So remember to also share with your friends as usual. Thank you all so much. Thank you again, Brian Gideon, and see you all soon on my next video. Bye. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.